Well, hello, hello, and good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Ed and Craig Go Off the Rails. With 50 plus years of combined produce, supply chain, entrepreneurial, and business experience, Craig Slade and Ed Bertad discuss the impacts of fresh produce on their lives and health. This podcast is a casual conversation between two friends just trying to get better. This is The Fresh Cred. So I understand you got up early this morning. Uh Uh-oh. Where's this going? You said you got up early this morning and you were watching the news, which I don't recommend that. So if you want to get better... Turn off the news. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to put that PSA out there. Right this now. isn't, but okay. So the news is not in my what you're watching. <laughs> well, we don't have what you're watching. Okay. That doesn't even exist in our little sphere. We're not doing what you're watching? We used to do what you're watching. No, but we didn't have that as a shtick. Uh, like, it was not one of our things. Along we can. with like technology, what you're watching. I, you know what? I personally don't like what you're watching because that just, y'all give me more brain uh, racing information to go try and pursue and I, I don't need that i mean there was a okay there was a time when i didn't turn on the tv plus i never <laughs> plus i never watched what you asked yeah me and you watch. never watched anything I, I go and do everything and watch all the, the stuff that you recommend and you watch nothing <laughs> i recommend so yeah i don't uh, like what you're watching you don't like what you're watching. Uh, Laura can remember the day when we didn't watch TV. We had an antenna outside, didn't have cable. We had mm-hmm. what channels would come You just did puppet shows? Uh, if that. <laughs> Laura, Laura grew up hard. And she had a hard life as a child. <laughs> family game night. Those are good. No, we didn't do any of that. that. We didn't try and do any family time. We weren't going to do that. We didn't. None of us liked each other no. that much. Mm. But... I didn't, so, allow, I didn't allow TV. I was against TV. <clears throat> it's bad for you. But anyway, you're watching the news. Very, I, I, you know, I, you're watching the news. Very, very, very Walton esque. Uh, that's very that's, Walton esque. That's, that's um, I, upbringing. I, I, right? I was uh, what was that guy's name? Head Walton, Mister Walton, John Boy. Oh. oh yeah, John Boy. I forgot about John Boy. Night, John Boy. Night, night. <laughs> God, that's a throwbacker. <laughs> what a what a ridiculous show! I can't believe I watched that. That's how, I can't believe we watched a lot of the stuff. How bad was I TV? Uh, oh, uh, Grizzly Adams. Mm. Uh, how about um, Gilligan's Island? Oh my God, man, that's a great show, though. Yeah. Holy cow, Thurst- you know, Thurston Howell. Professor- I always wanted to be Thurston Howell. That was my guy. I always wanted to hang with uh, what was the movie star girl? Not, uh, not. Uh, although as I got older, the black haired girl was pretty cute, but. Uh, uh, I can't. Recall. Oh, come on! What's her name? That's Ginger. 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 Thank you, Ginger. thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh! Ginger. Thurston Howell and Ginger. I'm pretty sure they had a side hustle going. They didn't tell uh, Thurston's wife about. That's just my speculation. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, we, I'm we just digress. saying. I'm just saying, if the professor was smart enough to make some of the stuff he did, he could have gotten him off the island. Oh yeah, but he way. didn't want him off the island. Like, that was his whole plan. See, deep down, he li- he was trying to do a human. It was an experiment. He was doing a human study, right? And so, oh, yeah, wow. so you didn't know that. No. Oh yeah, that was all. It was all Is that a, the his, conspiracy his theory. Grand plan was to get everybody stuck on the island. So yeah, no, he absolutely could have got them all. Um, Interesting so, theory, yeah. Craig. You've given me something to really think about for the rest of the week. I thought everybody knew that. Laura, you knew hmm. that, right? No, she's shaking her she's head. Shaking no. her head. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that was just a. That was all. Yeah, he planned that. That was all set up. You know, and you had the different personalities. Look at the different personalities you got on. He he put that group together, right? He had from rich to poor to movie stars that that had a. Uh, to, yeah, I mean, it's come on. And then Gilligan, the ding dong guy, you know, and the old gruff. Oh. It's obvious it was Skipper. an experiment, bud. Everybody was hand selected. Okay. Okay. I got you. Anyway, yeah, go back and watch some episodes. It's very deep, very deep. But uh, if I'm gonna watch old shows, I watch Mash. Now Sorry, that, that's my, my favorite friend, show. That that was it is still today, was then, is now, probably will be. In that's a classic. But 
the but the deepness of that show is insane. I mean, it's crazy. And have you ever seen? So let me ask you this: Have you ever seen the original Mash, where that si- where that series came from? Okay, mm-hmm. so you- I watched it all, buddy. I've watched them all a hundred. But the times. movie, the movie. I mean, Mash, I am a you've Mash. Seen the movie Mash. I've seen the movie. I've okay. seen all of the shows over and over. Frankly, I, I think you've got to be a little quick on the uptake to really get most need, of their humor, and then watch it some of it times. is. Some of it is uh, dated in the sense that a lot of the references are to old movie actors and even politicians and stuff like that. So, I mean, those kind of fall flat a little bit, I would say, even for me. Uh-huh. Um, like, you know, movie stars of that era or whatever. I wouldn't know that. Um, but overall, just the quickness and the comedy Super well written show. I will say, although I'm a huge Alan Alda fan, um, the later years where he directed and wrote some of those episodes, they got a little too, like to use your word, deep. They got a little bit too. Yeah, they tried to. They had a message. They were trying to commute. They're trying to. Yeah, uh, the message was just way too strong. Like I like the funny antics and jokes and stuff like that, but. the, in, at the end there, it got super, super um, complicated, for lack of a better term, I guess. So are, are, so are you familiar with, uh, so, so watch, Radar Riley had a deformed, I think it's his left hand. Mm-hmm. You will not see that. It, it, you have to watch for it, but, but unless you're looking for it, you will never see it. They, they, they hid that through the whole show. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but speaking of, I knew that too. Speaking of war, let's. Have you ever watched After Mash? Have you seen yeah. that show? It was only like seven episodes. Yeah. Okay. See, you're not as big a Mash fan I as I am. Not. Because I've seen After Mash. And if you go on YouTube, you can watch it. And it's basically the premise is they go back to a hospital in Missouri or wherever, Colonel Potter, um, where he lives, and he, he died, right? Becomes like the director. No, that was Henry Blake. Is the Blake the colonel. one that went down the helicopter? Yeah. Man, that's the most, that, and that's the worst. Ep- I mean, that's such a good freaking episode, but gosh, damn, man, what a tough episode when it was originally came out. And I was a child. Yeah, he he, he was hilarious. He was, right. he was, uh, McLean Stevenson is his yeah. name. Um, So, yeah, After Mash, and there's only a couple um, characters in that After Mash, and it's Klinger, it's Father Mulcahy, Colonel Potter and I think one more person, but it just you know it didn't last. Yeah, sometimes they don't. All right, so what's your take on the? I don't know how we got I there. I don't either, but let's go from there to Ukraine. That's a that's a that's a pending war. What do you think? You watch the news. That's why. That's where I've been going with this conversation. I, you watch the news. Yeah, I watch the news. So well I watch the news. Informed on what's happening over there. What 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 today is Sunday? <laughs> what the twenty something twenty? Is it the twentieth? I don't know. I don't have a watch. I don't have anything. It's the twentieth. Yeah, today, today's February twentieth. Uh, Russian has been about to invade Ukraine now for it's we're going on two weeks. Uh, they just they, mm-hmm. you know, they every every Friday they're saying they're on their way in. Everybody get the hell out. It's over. And then well, we go through the weekend and nobody. Goes well, isn't Ru- but Russia's not saying that. No, that's Everybody just us. Russia's saying they're just they're war games and military yeah, exercises. Yeah, yeah, right? that's that's the thing. Is it's like Which uh, are pretty extensive, a lot of money to spend in those rockets being fired. Well, but, there, there's no doubt Russia's making a statement. They're trying to to. I, I think it's a, a a massive negotiation on you know global scale. But just what the deal is to me, it's like you know, I guess if I am in this case, President Biden, but the President of the United States, right? I would not be making proclamations every two or three days that within 48 hours we expect them to invade, <laughs> and then 48 hours comes and goes and nobody gets invaded, right? I mean, at some point, yeah. that's going, I mean, you know, it, it, it's kind of lose. It's going to lose its steam, right? I mean, I, granted, it's great that they're not being invaded, but, you know, I got to be honest with you. 
I, and I and I've been kind of taking the the unrealness. I, I think it's less likely that they invade than not invade. I think it's more likely they don't invade. I think we just wind up with a bunch of very tense situations. Glad I'm not in Ukraine. Glad I'm not there. Not at my border because it could happen. But I think it's a lot of negotiations where ultimately Russia, which is what they wanted, was an agreement that Ukraine can't join NATO and probably some other stuff that goes on and this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, um, a lot of a lot of hand-wringing, uh, and this is maybe my optimistic view this how it goes, but I think in the end, a lot of hand-wringing, a lot of uh, we're, they're on their way in, everybody batting down the hatches, let's spend a bunch of money, and then in the end, um, Russia just negotiates that they don't get to join NATO, and we all move on. So, I don't know. I, I honestly, selfishly, I just cringe at the financial implications of us getting involved. I and mean, we've got so many other things going on. I mean, you know, living on the border, we, we, we see a lot on the news that I would say y'all don't see just being in other areas. But well, I'm pretty close um, to the border. You're close. Yeah, you probably see quite a bit. But, I mean, there's a lot of action going on. Over well, here. you guys, it, it's a um, much more volatile part of Mexico there. I, I don't know exactly why. Maybe because you guys have, to have a much more diverse commerce there. You know, you've got so many more McKee. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is there versus the Arizona border, but it's it's completely different. I mean, we, we cross over. I mean, we used to, and we still – I mean, I've been over a couple of times even since COVID, but uh, I wouldn't drive over in Texas. But here we go back and forth on on kind of the regular. It's weird. It's yeah, a difference. Um, it's it's a very populated area. I mean, on the Texas side, you're it's north of a million people now. I believe in the Rio Grande Valley entirely, um, and then probably close to eat close to equal. I mean, Reynosa is bigger than McAllen. So, um, and then to your point on the Maquilas, I mean, it's we talk about produce and the impact but the reality is there's i want to say 200 plus maybe close to 300 u.s companies represented on the other side of the border from a manufacturing perspective so um that might be high so don't quote me on yeah, that but, but it's I a mean, big it, number it's a big number i'm sure i mean i don't think people realize how much how big that mckeely industry is there and what that what 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 it happens but yeah, definitely yeah. huge. We can have a whole show on Maquila and um, in bond, import, export, yeah. all that stuff. So we could. That's I'm fun. not sure anybody would listen, but we could have a whole show on it. <laughs> hey, back to the Ukraine though. Did you know? I didn't realize how large their military is. It's the largest in Europe and only second to Russia. So here I thought was, you know, um, David and Goliath, which it kind of yeah. is to still to a certain degree, yeah, but <clears throat> they have a part, pretty formidable uh, military. Yeah, uh, I did not realize it was second to Russia, so that's news to me. I would have certainly thought the UK had a bigger military than the Ukraine, so you're certain on that? 250,000 troops Ukraine has. Well, so, so to give you, so Russia's got, I think it's half of their force, something like that, maybe it's a little more than half. They've got 190,000 at the border. So basically, the Ukraine is going to need to mobilize every troop they have to the border to be basically up to some percent. You know, like I say, I don't know if 190 is mm -hmm. half, but I think it's no more than two thirds of their their entire military. So, yeah, it, it is still David and Goliath. When it's all said and done, um, it's David and Goliath. It just is. It won't be easy. That's why I say Russia's, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's not like they just get to march in, right? It's not Crimea. Uh, that, 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 this is a whole different game in Crimea. And the other problem for the Ukrainians is there are Russian separatists inside the country. So not only are you going to be fighting folks outside the border coming over, but you're going to be fighting inside. Uh, and... Uh, like I said, I, I could send you send you a newsletter I read from a guy that's a financial guy that's from over there, and he he wrote a really good article on kind of his take on the whole deal. And there's a lot more that we don't know or understand about the whole situation um, that's taking place over there. But 
Again, my whole thing through the census deal started, I don't know really what there is for Russia to gain by invading. All they want is for the West to quit encroaching upon what they believe is their neighborhood. Um, you know, and they don't they don't like the West encroaching on their neighborhood and, you know, bringing these countries, these folks into the Western influence versus the Russian influence. And so they're just basically saying, hey, enough's enough. And this is where it ends. And this is what we will threaten with or possibly do if you guys don't slow your roll. That's kind of what's going on here. But for them to invade, there's there's virtually no upside. There's basic, they'll get cut off economically from the majority of the world. I mean, they'll still have China, which is, but, but all their oil, all their natural gas, that's all going to Europe, you know, and that'd be a painful deal for Europe. Yeah. But Go ahead. Wouldn't you have to agree that at least some small degree to some small degree <clears throat> there, <clears throat> excuse me, there's some awareness of war fatigue, if you will, from the United States. I mean, would we spend almost $2 trillion on Iraqi freedom, right? Just pulled everybody out not too long ago. Yeah. Now, I mean, that has to come into play if I'm Russia so, to a certain okay, degree. Okay, make no mistake. I will put this down. Make no mistake. And now you can, again, I will put $1,000 against this. A U.S. soldier will not fire a single shot, rocket, anything towards a Russian. The U.S. soldiers will not ever be on Ukrainian soil fighting the Russians. They're in Poland, I think, right? Wherever they're at. They're only there. Yeah, 5,082nd Airborne Division, some pretty that, bad dudes. That's all mustering. That's all show. Looks like we're going to do something. Mark my word. We will not fire any shots against Russia. Now, there may be sword, all kinds of saber rattling and up and down, but if Russia comes across the border, Ukraine will be on their own. It will be Ukrainians against Russians, and that's what it'll be. There won't be. So take that to the bank. <laughs> so, all right. yeah, I mean, it, now, where are your bigger problems? See, this is not, don't be distracted by this, right? This is a minor issue because at the end of the day, Russian's economy is, I think California's economy is bigger than Russia. California, or Texas, or maybe both. Uh, the Russian economy is no longer what any what everybody thought it was. Russia, the only thing they have that the rest of the world needs of any consequence is oil and natural gas. If they have, if they don't have oil and natural gas, we're not even having this conversation. I'm just telling you. You know, sure they got a military, sure they can kill, but at the end, everything. Globally, it comes down to money, and that's really the real power. And you know, I mean, f f face it. I mean, you've got uh, North Korea over there. That that knucklehead could wake up any day and you know fire off a missile. But he's he's the reason he's main reason he's irrelevant is he's got no economy. He's nobody, and they they, just, they don't care. You know. So compared to the United States, <clears throat> which is a GDP of twenty one trillion. Going back to the two trillion it cost us for Iraqi freedom, that's a pretty big chunk. Um, Ru Russia's national GDP comes in at one point five, and California's is two point almost two point five. Yeah, so eighty percent larger than Russia. So, so think about that. The California economy is bigger than the entire. I mean, they're they're not significant. Now, this is where I was going with this is. Don't get distracted by what's going on in the Ukraine. The problem with the Olympics ending and with what's going on in the Ukraine and how we're reacting to that is Taiwan and China because there's where the big problem is going to come in because just about all the semiconductors that are made come out of Taiwan. We, got, we have a huge amount of commerce with Taiwan, and China has been after bringing Taiwan into their sphere. They, that is going to be, that is our future world problem right there. You want to talk about rocking economies and messing things up. Uh, that's the one. Because, A, China is, 
Are they the biggest economy? They're second, I think, still to us. They may be bigger. Yeah, we're still the world's yeah, largest, so. but the, the other um, fact, you're talking about states. So the closest state to Russia is, is Texas at 1.6 trillion. Okay. Point one trillion. Yeah, so I mean, larger still. So, so again, we're we're you know, it makes for great news. You know what I thought? There's a couple of things through all of this. You know, you always wonder what's going to replace in the news cycle. And for the for the love of God, we have had COVID in the news cycle way longer than I ever thought. Well, this whole Ukrainian deal is finally the tipping point to where the lead story is no longer COVID. This is the news story that when we look back a year from now and we think, well, you know, we talked about that COVID for all that time. What, what, what when did we quit talking? This is when we quit talking about it. You got Omicron that became a big nothing burger for the most part. Everybody got it. Nobody really, you know, you didn't have a, a tremendous amount of illnesses. Hospitals didn't fill up. Basically, COVID finally hit its peak in terms of interest level. Nobody's counting the numbers anymore. Mass mandates are being pulled off. Hell, California pulled their mask. It's over, right? It's now over as far as a new story. And the deal is, is Ukraine and Russia has supplanted that news story. And that today, we're, we're in the midst of bye-bye COVID news. Thank God. So I hope the Russians don't invade. I hope it's just a bunch of saber rattling. And then we can look back and say, thank you guys for creating a brand new news story that we could go listen to that wasn't freaking COVID related. So there you go. See, that's the optimism in me. See, I look for the, I look for the silver. Yeah, lining, I like brother. that. That's the silver, silver lining. lining. So, uh, uh, Hey, you know what? You sent something this week. Uh, real quick, and I, I know we need, uh -oh. we need to wrap up. No, it was the uh, what was the Japanese saying uh, that you sent out in the Discord? Um, I wanted to explore that real quick if you could maybe break it down for me. Oh no, Ikigai, Ikigai. I, I didn't know how to pronounce it, so that was first. Ikigai. Well, I don't know if that's right or not. Ikigai is that so? That's cool. I like that word. Ikigai. Laura, is that the correct pronunciation? Yes, Laura said she confirmed it is the correct pronunciation. <laughs> Laura studied Japanese uh, on her own. So. so I just sent you, like, I mean, we, we touched on it last week. It, it's your reason for being, and what, I, what I'd sent you was like a, is that a Venn diagram? I think, um, where all of the components of your life converge into perfection or like your focus right, right. if you will so icky guy is um, your focus so that's what i want to understand about this whole venn diagram i believe that is so icky means life and guy describes value or worth oh, I so like your icky guy is your life purpose life. or your bliss but you know what i like life worth better than purpose okay you, you see you see the you see the difference right you know so purpose means it's like it's like a a, a, a job right it, it, it's like you have a task so you, you so you feel like that you've got to find out what is my task here right i got put down here to do a job worth means you know you put down here to basically provide value to others right or to the world or to to existence right so I like that life worth that that's far better than life purpose because so the components of the diagram I'd sent you with Ikigai being in the middle uh -huh. surrounded worth. by surrounded by passion, mission, profession, and vocation. Right. That's the inner ring around Ikigai or bliss. And then oh, outside of that ring, or set of rings is what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for and what the world needs. So here, here's all right. So as I look now, I, I didn't really understand this. So I appreciate you bringing this in and I guess. So do you, do you see that section just above it could get, it says happy and fulfilled, but no wealth. Yeah. And then the other, which is excited and self approval, but uncertain. 
And so really close to perfection or bliss or ikigai, there's some places you can be that aren't quite as good in my mind, even as some of the outer rings. Right. Feeling comfortable but empty or feeling useless but also satisfied. That's as close as you get to perfection, if you will, you can be that far off, which I think all of those four don't sound that What's great. What's the difference between profession and vocation? Like for Edward Todd, what's your profession and what's your vocation? Uh, I guess that to me is the same. I mean, you know, in other countries it's But I guess maybe maybe, maybe, maybe you would be professional salesperson and your vocation is having RPCs. Laura, does that sound right? No, I think the vocation is is like for an electrician, that's your vocation. Well, that would be a professional um, but boy. You, but you might your profession might be um wiring the space shuttle. No, so I think yeah, we, we you got to flip that. Profession okay. professions electrician, vocation is wiring the space shuttle. Your profession is sales. Okay. I I'm just Actually, I think that'd be an engineer, but okay. I, I, I mean, what, you're what, using my... What did you say? You sales engineer? I actually think that'd be a mechanical engineer for, for the space shuttle, but okay. <laughs> uh, Harry, the electrician, working on the space shuttle. <laughs> Profession Help refers me. to the career... Hold on. I'm going to give you okay, the... You I'm going to give it to you. Right. Profession refers to the career that one opts for getting extensive training and acquiring special skills to become eligible for a job in it. Vocation refers to an occupation for which God gives a calling to the individual. Oh my God. That's the definition. I'm certain God did not, uh, man, I got to relook at my calling because if he said, he surely did not, my calling is surely not peddling. <laughs> Maybe I should be peddling the good word. Maybe I should be peddling the gospel. You know what? My father was a preacher. You know, oh man, I don't even want to think about that. Uh, I couldn't live a life. Uh, I, yeah, I'm out on that. If you know, there's a website called differencebetween.com. <laughs> what? No, I don't. I don't there's even a, know what that has yeah. relevance to our conversation either. Well, because it, I, I looked up and it popped up so difference between vocation and profession, and that's what it gave me. So those oh, the friendly oh. folks at differencebetween.com. Oh my God! There's a dot com for everything. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I love this this anywho. Japanese concept of ikigai. That's awesome. The one thing that though, so, but here's the. Do you love it enough to get it tattooed? Nope, I don't on your I body. Have, there's nothing, you know. Well, then you don't I'm not, love it. You know, I, I, yeah. It, honestly, if love and getting tattoos are, are they go one in the same? I love nothing because I'm not getting a tattoo. How many do you have now? Oh, on my ass or just anywhere? <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> It's countless. In fact, really? In fact, yeah. You, in fact, um, it, yeah, countless. I mean, if you counted, it, you could not count any less. Okay. Because I have zero. Interesting. Have none. All right. None, none, none. Although my family wants me to get one. Yeah, I'd like to be there. Yeah. I'll sell tickets to that. And you know what? Um, my uh, oldest daughter. She practices in the art. Oh, so then you can get a discount. I can, I can get it done for free. Well, I think Ikigai is going to be a recurring theme. So I'm glad that you... Um, I liked it. That I provided something that intrigued you. It did, you. intrigued. I really like it. I want to fill out the... I want to fill one out for myself and like see what's going on. So in your Japanese study... I hadn't study, thought about that, but I think I'll do the same this. thing. In your Japanese study, you never ran across Ikigai? Stop it, Dad. I haven't studied Japanese. <laughs> uh, I thought, wasn't Harry Potter, wasn't he Japanese? <laughs> I mean, they never said he wasn't, okay, but... See, I, I'm pretty sure he was. <laughs> I don't think True. so. I, th I think he was, so... Well, we're going to keep digging into this. Dig, 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 baby. Now I'm going to fill I'm gonna fill out my own... How about for homework? Okay. I'm going to find a blank... I'll send it to y'all, right. and we'll fill it out. Yeah, let's do that. My only challenge, right, 
So I, I, okay. I but it kind of, I guess if, if you look at, because of the way the circles are all intertwined, I can probably get over it. But I firmly believe the top one, what you love and the bottom one, what you can get paid for go hand in hand. And I think, I think a misnomer we're taught, um, is that you must, oh, you might not must, but that, that life has to be about work and entertainment, right? Or, or things that you're interested in, passionate, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm a believer that if you really want to have a full life and enjoy life, you need to make sure whatever you do every day for a job, for a career, even if it doesn't pay stupid money, you need to really, it needs to be something you love. This is. It needs to be something you're passionate about. I mean, uh, the majority of your, and that doesn't mean, and that doesn't mean easy. No, and it, it absolutely does. I mean, but you know, I mean, Ryan Palmer, but he cut characterized playing golf as easy, but to do him or any golfer, pick any professional golfer, anybody in any profession, right. To be at that level, to be on top of your game, the amount of work and effort and what you have to, the amount of passion you have to have for that. So, so, it is extremely hard not only to get there, but to maintain it and stay there and da 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 da. It's all that is super tough. But those guys, I would still say, now they probably don't have the same love for it that they had when they were younger and it was just for fun. Because when it does become for your living, there's a different level of pressure. But I would say those guys cannot play at that level if they do not love the game. Right. You can't be that good at something if you don't love the game. If that's, you know, it's not what you do. I mean, that's me personally speaking. I think whether you're a salesperson or you're you, you pick the career path, uh, you're a writer. If you don't love that, it's really hard for you to excel at that. Yeah. So that was my only thing right. with that grant diagram. But again, where the circles, are you either have to love it or learn to love it. Or realize that you love it or like, or make it shape it into something that you can, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we, we, there, we, we, there are things that, that, that we naturally develop a passion for, right? I mean, I didn't, I didn't, when I was in college school, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I was not going to be a sales guy. That was absolutely the last thing on my list till I'm, older gentleman actually sat me down and said, Hey, maybe you ought to think about this sales thing. Literally. I mean, that's a true conversation I have with a guy that, um, I was going to be a computer science guy. I was trying to learn to program. Oh my gosh. I would have, I would have had a miserable life. My life would have been so miserable. Now my brother, my oldest brother, super successful, uh, as a programmer, but that life fit him. Um, me, it, it I can say, I can remember writing code and doing it. I could do it. And, but it was just a grind. If I'd have had to go and do that every day, what I do now, I mean, and then the industry that we're in, I mean, that, that much I got lucky on produce being an industry and, you know, feeling like that I'm at least selling something that's, uh, you know, I'd hate to be selling cigarettes. Not that that's bad. I mean, people got to do it. People smoke. It's a job, right? But I, that's the, it, it, how fortunate we are to be a, in an industry that, you know, you can feel great about what you're selling, what you're doing, what, what you're asking people to consume. Um, and like I say, get to, get to be selling it every day and be making it happen and putting things together. I freaking love it. So I don't know. And then dumb luck. Like I say, again, I didn't set out on the career path. Few people in my life, a lot of people in my life, I could name off several people that, changed the course of my life and made a huge difference. So you being one of them, Edward. Well, that's flattering. You're awful nice today. You keep me honest. You know, you're like, you drinking some different coffee or something. <laughs> Optimism. Oh, I don't want to go off on the coffee tangent, hope but can I tell you that? Yeah. Have you, do you ever notice that just switching coffees, you get a different kind of, I mean, let's face it, we're looking for the caffeine rush, but I'm drinking a coffee that 
this morning that my wife typically typically drinks that she claims is a lot less a lot less strong uh-huh. than my coffee. Right. But when I switch up, because I hadn't ground beans, um, it hits me like a ton of bricks because it's different. I, I guess I don't know. I mean, it's I, I so in all honesty, no, I don't. I, I don't, I can't okay. discern the difference. Caffe- in other words, in terms of jolt, not jolt, I t- certainly taste flavor. Uh, mm. that, 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 that I pick up. I mean, that's why, you know, I'm, I, uh, yeah, flavor's the biggest thing for me, but I can't say that I noticed the, the caffeine jolt. So, hmm. what are you drinking today? Today is Starbucks. That is my go to standard. Now, um, I don't have my grinder here, um, <laughs> so I'm I'm drinking it pre ground. It's not as good. Grinding fresh is key. But now, what I typically drink is from Costco. It is called San Francisco Bay Coffee. Um, it's outstanding. It's a huge bag of it, and that's fresh ground. Uh, like I say, it's out of Costco. San Francisco Bay, I think, is the name of it, and uh, super dark. Super dark, super oily. That's what that's what I love about Starbucks coffee. Take some time, buy Starbucks, right, and buy anybody. Pete's Pete's does a good job of it, but but buy Starbucks and then buy just about anybody else, and pour it out. The oil content on Starbucks beans is insane. It's just shiny, right? It's shiny, mm-hmm. super dark roast. Oh. Now, most people say it tastes like burnt coffee. It tastes bitter. What? I want that, right? I mean, that's my, I want my coffee to freaking just reach up and bite my ass, you know, when I when I drink it. It's like wine, wine, coffee. I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna start adding some stuff to my coffee. Like, like what? Like butter? Um, like butter, not sugar. Don't be sugar, no cream. Put that stuff down, clown. <laughs> Adaptogens, nootropics, Ooh. lion's mane, mushrooms. Right, so have you had? Choline. Have you had that yet? Have you had the? Um, uh, force, I have it. Forsomatic, forsomatic, I think is the name of it. So that no. so forsomatic does. I I got some of their coffee. I did again. I didn't notice any difference on that lion's mane. Maybe I didn't go after it long enough. Uh, I didn't seem any smarter. Um, so I just dropped back because it's super expensive. No, but there's there's a a mix. So there's some convenience products out there ah. that have it all put together. Um, ashwagandha, turmeric, a bunch of different things yeah. that you can add. So I'm gonna check it out. Try to figure it out myself. Well, like I say, check out the Four Somatic website because, like I say, Lions Me, they've already got the coffee with that stuff in there, right? Uh, and mm-hmm. then the idea is you drink that with a slab of butter off in there and man, that gets your freaking brain just pinging your freaking idea guy for the day with that going. So I think the idea is to keep the anxiety level associated or connected to, you know, caffeine stimulation to try to keep it in check. See, see, I, so, so does call, so anxiety, you, you, you suffer from that. It's a low level, uh-huh. I think to where you start. I think people would equate it to spinning your wheels. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that coffee gives me. Anxiety. I mean, you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean by spinning your wheels. Like you get so wired up that you're kind of just get distracted with. Oh, you know, I forgot to yeah, clean the pencil sharpener when I should why. be doing. Maybe is that the coffee that's yeah. doing that? Is that what's been causing that? <laughs> that's the shiny object Jeez, stuff. Yeah, I've been freaking babbling that. But you know what? I, I don't know how long I've been drinking coffee. I quit drinking coffee for a couple of days. Mm, I bet those were some fun yeah, days. Not fun. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and so before we leave the coffee, and then we got to get the hell out of here. But um, oh, I know I've got a ton of camping gear to go pick oh, up for camping that's next right. week. Right, you're going on your big daddy daughter camp. Daddy daughter camping trip, annual camping so trip. So is uh, so is this the last one? It better not be. I mean, it could be. I mean, so how? So, so how was? Is there an age limit? Or I mean, you got twenty-five-year-old daughter, daddy's going. No. Okay. Tw- I mean, my daughter's twelve. Well, I know, so. but I mean, I'm just saying. I, and then the birthday girl, um, that you know is is the reason why we're going. She's going to be thirteen. So, so twelve, thirteen. But you know. 
as one of the other dads mentioned, you know, who knows how long they'll be interested in doing this. So let's not skip a year. Yeah. No, you sure don't want to skip a year. Keep it going. Uh, I, the Lord never got to do any camping adventures. We did da- daddy daughter dances. We, you know, the slates were a bit more cultured. We, we didn't do anything outdoors. We do the dances too. <laughs> we did, we did the daddy daughter dance. And, uh, mm-hmm. I took the kids to work one time. They used to have this thing where take your kids to work for a day or something. Mm-hmm. I think they were miserable, except that I had a bunch of good snacks. There was a summer that I took my oldest daughter to yeah. work every day, but that's another story. Times have uh, changed, buddy. Have they? I'd say a little bit. I wouldn't do things. Yeah. What wouldn't you do? I don't even know if I should admit to this, but I remember, I don't know. I better not. <laughs> Callie might be listening. <laughs> it was over 20 years ago. Oh, so. that's, it, that's, you know, that's uh, what they call that. Uh, Bryce was old. Uh, they call that. Uh, what? Statute, of, Statute limitations? of limitations. Okay. So somebody needed a hot load of pallets at one point and Bryce went in a, tr- into, in a semi with me in a car seat. He was older than Violet, <laughs> but not old enough to talk. <laughs> so. So it wasn't like you. So when you say hot, they needed it quick, not stolen. They needed it quick. Well, I know, but nobody was but around. Hot can also refer to a stolen. I jumped in. It's like you went. Yeah. Stolen. Okay. I, mean, I meant like urgent. Seat. Yeah, urgent. Urgent. So I jumped in a truck and delivered a load of pallets, and Bryce in the passenger seat in the car seat. That, like, there's no hard. way that probably go to jail for that today. I'm guessing Callie didn't approve that. That was just you took it upon yourself to make that decision. I think I took it upon yeah, myself. I'm yeah, sure you did. I can imagine. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I remember mm-hmm. the, I remember the old original. God, man, we could go forever. I can remember the original old ad that I met at the old freaking IHOP. You and Hanaro, <laughs> whole different. <laughs> okay, you, you were such a go. different guy, man, back then. Different freaking guy. <clears throat> Craig, <laughs> let's not rehash the past. <laughs> oh my God. I like me some. Oh man. They don't even make them that good anymore, but those Swedish pank or Swedish crepes that they used to make or still do, those were used to be so good. Good stuff, brother. I could eat my weight in those things. And you did, I think, back then. I think I tried, at least. Sure. Hey, you got a quote for the week? Because I don't. The Academy is going to be crowded. Be, you don't I'm have honest, one? I didn't bring one this week. Well, I've got one for each of us then. Please. Because I've got two. Bring one of them I can't please, recall if I've ever homework. used before. Yeah. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you the stoic. Okay. So what is the quote? Stoic one? So this is Craig's quote from old Socrates or Socrates, for those of you that know any better. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I like that. I, I, you know, I, I probably couldn't have picked a better one. You, you did good. Did you I get an channeling A me. today? You're channeling me today, buddy. Yeah. Well, I know you're kind of a stick page. in the mud. That's why you like that <laughs> real hardcore uh, stuff. Uh, you're not that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a reminder, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. And you know why that's relevant? No, no. Why? Because there ain't shit you can do about the old buddy. Why fight? That's true. It's it's there. It's cast in stone. Mm-hmm. And so all you can do is deal with the future. Just like these podcasts, they're going to live forever. They are, and we'll be we'll never be able to change. And we'll be judged by them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody's ju- in the future. Anybody's judging us. So now yeah. for mine, which is the one that I think I've used already, but I came across it. So, so, you, um, so this is a refurber? It might be. I'm not sure. Right? I've seen it for a while. And you'll never even guess. You you wouldn't guess in a million years who said this. Oh, wait, hang on. That, but I like challenge. it. That's a challenge. I like so, it a lot. So you, you're going to is, some clues. But tell, read the quote to me. Let me see if I can hear it. And then I'll then you got to maybe give me some clues as to who it might be. Let me guess. Let's play that game. Then we'll wrap this show. I don't even know if I have clues. But be careful with how much you tolerate. You are treat, teaching them how to treat you. Be careful how much you tolerate. You are teaching them how to treat you. And that's a fact. 
completely agree. Yeah. In other words, you know, everybody in civilized world or culture, you know, you have to put up with a certain amount of crap. Yeah. But there has to be a limit. But within that, right, Uh how you react. I mean, I'm sorry, read read it one more time. Read it again? One more time. Be careful with how much you tolerate. You are teaching them how to treat you. Right. And and so, but but within that toleration, right? When when you know, in other words, if what's that? What, so so to tolerate, so you can take that as punching somebody in the face, right? Mm-hmm. But that's not, I don't think, the intent. I'm curious. I'm I'm trying to think through my mind who might have said that. But but the intent is, if something somebody does something to you that is offensive or hurts you or whatever, instead of just letting it go, let them know, right? It's not about, Mm -hmm. hey, it pisses me out, boom. Give them some insight into, (laughs) hey, I know that seems X, Y, Z, and I get da-da-da-da, but this is how it affects me and this is why it's a challenge for me and man i'd really appreciate you not doing that as opposed to just tolerating it because then they treat you badly i think i don't know who said it ed i'm not going to play yeah i mean i think i think from like a like a work perspective it's the difference between being told you did something wrong and of course there's some ownership component to that right like we all need to do better at owning our mistakes i think that the the knee-jerk reaction for most people is to defend and you know um and and argue but the reality is i think most people would appreciate some admission but um it's the difference between being told you did something wrong versus in a personal insult or you know an offense or um disrespect let's put it yeah i mean i think yeah i mean uh if you tolerate somebody beating you down, you will train them to keep beating you yeah. down. But like I say, I always caution. So, so I will give you, okay, I am going to have a quote. Just Victor Frankel. Hmm. I've read the book twice. I recommend if you read no other book the rest of your life, A Man's Search for Meaning, written. <sighs> late forties. Um, Victor Frankel's a psychiatrist that was concentration camp. Uh, telling you uh, in terms of human mind, in terms of every, hey, if you read nothing else, your whole life, Victor Frankel's man search for me hmm. in life. I'm telling you right now, like I say, I've read the book twice and I'm not an avid reader. I mean, I've forced myself to read just because it's super good for you. But uh, anyway, he has, so his was his quote is there's a space so so between um action and your response there is the space and it may be a millisecond but that space is all the difference in the world as to how things progress from there meaning basically an action against you and how you stop and choose to respond so either you respond without taking that space to consider your response or you recognize there is a space there and you can stop and calculate and think and choose your response so Hmm. between action and response there is a space and that space is crucial to everything and like i say that comes from you got to read the book you got to understand i mean Mm. He he saw in that concentration cap, he experienced it, but he, he saw so many different people, right? And how some people responded to just the most brutal, crucial things you can't even wrap your mind around, right? Uh, until you read it, the, the kind of stuff that they went through. And the difference in the responses, the difference of the people that, that actually got out and went on 
and those that didn't. So anyway, great book. What's the name of the book? A ma- What's the a name of the book? Man's Search for Meaning of Life. Victor Frankel. Hmm. Yeah. That sounds good. No, buddy. I mean, it's, it, again, the very front end. It's just, yeah. I, I can't tell you enough. I mean, get that, read well, that. So. I'm reading a book right now that I think I, it'll take me about 10 times to read and understand it, and that's The Art of War. Oh my There's God. just too many references. There's too many references to the different kingdoms and like you have to know a lot about history to even I don't know. Super just, ridiculous. I mean, that's it, super hard. In fact, yeah, terribly hard to read that book. I I, I guess kind of read it. I mean, I, I read it I, and then this was years ago, probably 30 years ago I read that book or what it, it's been a long time back. Um some great quotes that come out of that, some great, you know, str- strategic concepts. concepts, strategic philosophies. I mean, um, yeah. Dude, the, the, the Japanese are, they're, they're so far ahead of us up here. Next level. Up in the head, anyway, strategically. So you're talking about reading. Yes. What did Mark, what did Mark Twain say about reading? Uh, don't rot your mind out. Watch TV. Don't read. Mark Twain said, A person who won't read has no advantage over one who can't read. Well, that's a good, that's, that's, yeah. Man, we got a bunch of quotes today. This is quote day. Quote day. Segwaying the hell out of some quotes. We got to, we got to break all these up, make this like 10 shows out of these quotes. Uh, All right. So, um, yeah, let's get the heck out of here, Edward. It's been another wonderful experience with you. Great to see Mm -hmm. Laura. Violet Manson. Learning's fun. It is fun. Getting better. <laughs> With Craig. Getting be- <laughs> <laughs> you know, getting better is fun. Huh? Let's go get better today. Let's go get better this week. Well, I'm going to go do my 100 push ups. Are you? No, I'm going. Uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just develop. I'm going snowboarding. So I'm getting the hell out of here and I'm heading to, to the snowboard. Hey, that's some good exercise. Do you have good. something to measure the activity with? Well, I have my Apple Watch, and then I do my yeah, slopes, man, which takes me up and down. Like mountain. calories burned and all that stuff? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd like to see those stats at the end of the I'll, day. I'll put that. It better be like 3,000 at least. It won't be that much. You, you guys, that's what I say. You cannot, you can't out-exercise your freaking mouth, they say. Somebody said that quote. That's a quote from somebody. You can't out-exercise your mouth. Yeah, you can. You can. You watch these marathon runners, or I was watching cross-country skiing, Last night, you see the U.S. women's cross-country skier after she crossed the line. Like she, what? Those people, right? They're they're not over. They're not consumed. That you cannot. If 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 you take somebody that consumes just a stupid amount of calories and food that's not good for you, donuts, you name it, whatever the worst kind of food is. Yeah, you within out, reason. You can, no, Craig. But, but but the statement stands. You cannot out exercise your mouth. If your mouth chooses to take the wrong path, you can't give me ski professional skiers and marathon runners. That's not the point. The point is, is random Joes and Jules, random Joes and Julies. How about that? Um, that freaking have deplorable diets. They can't fix that diet what they're putting through their mouth with exercise can't. So go ahead with your professional skiers, what you're going to say on that. So. I'm just saying like, I, I get it. They're not eating junk, but I think their challenge is to eat enough calories because they're burning. Look, that race, it was uh Jesse Diggins, a silver in the 30 K freestyle um, cross country uh-huh. race. Yeah. Best finish by an American ever. I think the winner was from Norway. Um, it's just, a, it's amazing feat. Look, I haven't cross country skied, but I have an idea of what that would entail. I mean, you just see them. It's just amazing that they can keep going that long. 30 kilometers. Yeah. It was an hour and 24 minutes, 54 seconds of nonstop cross country skiing. Which in that moment, that is, you know, but, but do they do that every day? So, so think about this. They train every day. Yeah, they train every day. So think about this. So for me to run three miles, I think I burned somewhere around 300, according to the watches or whatever, and however close, but I burned like 350 calories for a three-mile run. Oh, you're doing something wrong. 
Yeah, I tell you what. You, what what's what's your most strenuous exercise? Chopping wood. Wood chopper. Yeah, it's bad when you can't think of your most strenuous exercise. That ought to come like top of your head. Exercise boy. Well, it depends. I'm thinking about what I do regularly or what I do periodically. Just, just think about uh, do you, do you have so think about something that you're going to do in the near future. The most strenuous, or maybe just go do a strenuous exercise and take your little whoopster and you monitor how many yeah. calories you burn. You'll Jump, be shot. Jumping rope. Jumping rope. Perfect. Jumping rope burns some calories. How much? I mean, according to whoop, when I, I don't, I don't remember, but I think it's closer to five if I do it for 30 minutes off and on in intervals. But, um, I will, I've got an old crappy lawnmower and I'm telling you, pushing it. In the yard for a couple hours, that can get. That's a pretty good exercise. It's a pretty good workout if you do it right. Like you don't stop. You do it at a good pace. You push yourself. Like it can't be. It, it half of it is what you make of it. Right? But but all, all, all um, which- I, I believe me. I want to go get a zero turn riding lawnmower, but then I don't have that exercise opportunity, which I need as many as I can get. And I like varied exercise because, like you running, I get bored. Like I, I can run, get, but I used to get freaking bored. I, hated I get running. bored. I hated running. Like, you know, I get bored. Just yeah, it's boring. So, all right. Well, this show may be getting boring, so we better wrap it up. But uh, all right, uh, all right. So, See you next time. You know, we, get, we got plenty to talk about next do. time. We're gonna have the survey, the little thing you're sending out. We'll have all of us fill those out. Find out what we find. Follow on the old icky guy. Uh, we'll bring mm-hmm. more Japanese words. Uh, you'll you'll be producing your video that you're going to do for us. Uh, God, we got so much. You got a lot of homework. So, anyway, yeah. what, what's that? How do they get in touch with us? What do they do? Where do they find us? The fresh credit gmail dot com. Send us your requests, comments, or follow us and or follow us on Instagram at the fresh cred on Facebook now. Recently at the fresh cred as well at cred fresh on twitter um yeah that's let us know that's it guys y'all can get in touch with us in so many ways and most of you probably even know us and can ping us on the old texture or phone so get in touch mm. with us let us know what's going on linkedin linkedin that's that's all. we don't have a fresh cred for linkedin but we have we, individual you know we're gonna have to set for... one of those linkedin because that's the only social media that i do and so i need a we need a the fresh cred on the old linkedin and you know what? The world's going to gravitate to that because you guys have destroyed all the other social medias with all your freaking ridiculous political speak and all that kind of junk. Everything mm-hmm. else is mm-hmm. going to go down the toilet and LinkedIn's going to be left standing because there we're not trying to create freaking wars. We're just there for business. Hey, LinkedIn's gotten, it's legit. Man. I, think, I mean, yeah, the, the, from a professional perspective, you know, we have access to, um, to their LinkedIn learning. And they've got some great educational material. I don't know anything yeah. about that. I'll have to check that out. Oh, yeah. So. Check it out. LinkedIn Learning. Uh, but Laura, Violet, Edward, it is such a pleasure to see all you guys. Y'all have a great week. Be safe out there. Go do something good. Take care. See you. Bye.